Hey guys, here we are off the heels of the Lomachenko film study videos. Uh, we're doing those videos not only because Lomachenko is amazing and he's my favorite fighter at the moment, but in anticipation for a Mikey Garcia fight, um, who I also love as a fighter. I never miss Mikey Garcia's fights. They're always super fun. Um, and, you know, he's a very, very fan-friendly fighter uh, most of the time. So uh, we're doing these videos to compare them. I'm going to point out um, some of the things that Mikey Garcia does really well throughout the course of this fight. And this one actually going to be of the Juan Manuel Lopez fight. Um, I don't think that that's, you know, probably the best comparison, seeing how he blows him out of the water so badly. Uh, we'll, but we will get to see why he's able to do that to... Um, to Lopez, uh, and I'll be able to, you know, I don't know how much I should demonstrate that Lomachenko is going to be different during the course of these these exchanges, the micro exchanges that they go through, um, but I want to show you what skills Mikey Garcia has, and then we can talk about the actual possible matchup, um, but before we get into the fight, I wanted to share this excerpt from uh, in between the second and the third round after Mikey scored a knockdown with a straight right of Lopez and it kind of tells you you know his whole game plan for the fight and I find this to be a very popular game plan um, against more I'll say quote unquote technical fighters um, nothing against Mikey and his team obviously he knocks him out and it's a, it winds up being a great game plan but there's just a this is just a subtle difference between um, most fighters um, and then really like the high level fighters, but I'm going to play the, the audio clip. Let him make mistakes. Don't get into no exchanges. Let him make mistakes. Uh, and, like, there's nothing wrong with that as a game plan, right? Um, whether he's setting up his own shots or not, you know, that's what really separates uh, his ability to fight versus uh, Lomachenko's. Because as you see in the film study between for Lomachenko, he sets up all his offense. You know, he, he baits and counters. Um, he gets into better, like, superior position to land his offense. Uh, and there's just a fundamental difference um, between them as fighters. But that's also why I think that this is such a great fight to kind of look at um, because we can see if the skills that he employs in, during the course of this fight uh, will translate to him being able to fight Lomachenko because of the fact that I feel like this is going to be the kind of fight it's going to be Lomachenko coming forward and Mikey Garcia trying to counter and catch him coming in uh, or making mistakes. But... Let me turn off the volume so you can actually hear me. So right away, uh, um, Juan Manuel Lopez doing some good things, touching his glove. Garcia says, oh, I can do that too. I'm going to touch his glove as well. So he starts sticking it out there. Um, and there's more rhyme and reason to it than that. But I just want to point out right here... Um, when Mikey Garcia's glove is all the way out and uh, Lopez's gloves are stuck close in, he has um, lead hand control, right? And if Juan Manuel Lopez had his hand all the way out, he would have lead hand control. So here we go. Again, a little more hand fighting. And Lopez kind of throws like a little like left hook right there, you know. And, and uh, Garcia kind of mistakes it for the same touch and go jab kind of stuff you know, hand control that, that they had going on. Uh, and if, you know, Lopez had committed to that shot, you know, he probably could have landed it. Uh, kind of like how he does right there. Uh, and again, shows him the left hand. Right. And then makes him eat that punch. And this is really interesting um, because... Uh, Garcia has better foot position. You know, he's on the outside. There's even, like, a massive distance between them uh, at the start of that. Uh, it has, like, um, Lopez kind of, like, lunging in. But watch Mikey Garcia uh, after he gets hit. You know, it's really tough to see, but it looks like 
he buckles, you know, and he catches him with a great freaking shot. And that just goes to show you, like, you know, Juan Manuel Lopez, although he's a, you know, I don't want to say a shot fighter, you know, but, you know, he's past his prime or whatever. Uh, he sees his opportunity to, to land a big shot with the fainting, and he takes it. He capitalizes on it in the best way. Rather than just testing the waters to see how it's going to go and giving away his game plan, he just cracks him. Um, great shot from Lopez. Um, and Lopez does a lot of good things in this fight, in spite of the fact that he just gets thoroughly dominated. But um, uh, there's some really interesting things um, going on, and I want to go over both of these right here. So one of Lopez's tells... And, like, see how easy that counter is? Uh, it was just completely natural. Uh, Mikey didn't flinch. He didn't see nothing coming. It's because if you watch Lopez's legs um, as he moves, we'll put it in slow-mo. He rocks back to the right leg. Now he rocks to the front leg, rocks to the back, and then he, he leaps in. And Mikey sees it coming and is able to catch him. Uh, he already... You know, 30 seconds into the fight, and he's he already has Lopez's uh, rhythm down, right? His his timing, he knows when he's going to punch, except for, you know, getting caught with that huge left hand. Um, I think that was a distance problem, and probably he just didn't believe he was going to go for a big shot, but that's negligible. Um, he makes it look so easy, and we're going to see why right here, how he knows that um, the timing of that, there, there could have been an attack. Watch him rock back, rock forward, and then Mikey lands a jab, right? So if you look at his, his timing for that, for this um, the double jab, rocks back, forward, back, forward, back, and then makes an attack, and he's able to counter it. He knows that Juan Manuel Lopez is not punching when he has all his weight on his front leg. See right there? No punch. No punch. Boom. And he just times him with the jab right there. Um, it just shows that he's watched a lot of tape of of Lopez. They're prepared for this fight, and that's why they're so confident in having a game plan that's just um, let him make mistakes, you know, because they see the flaws in his game already. Uh, so Lopez keeping the distance. Look at how far away they are. You know, he has to maintain that distance because he doesn't even know why he's getting punched yet. And again, rocks forward onto his foot, Puts his weight on the front leg, and because he didn't jump forward with that with his jab, Mikey Garcia knows he's not going to punch him, and is able to live a great uh, deliver a greatly timed a well timed jab. Um, again, puts all his weight on his front leg, and eats a jab. I think Mikey Garcia actually gets his hand. So he throws it, and then he gets his hand on Lopez's right hand. Great defense right there. Uh, before getting into the film study stuff for Mikey Garcia, I didn't expect to see that level of, uh, of defense from him. Again, parrying the jab right there, keeping his eyes. Again, another good example of him doing his little shuffle right here. And throws the punch, and he just... It's perfectly timed for Garcia. He knows it's coming. And then um, he does something really good. He shoots kind of an uppercut under Mikey Garcia's punch because he realizes that Mikey's, you know, parrying or catching. Uh, he does eat a counter right there. But it's more of a, like, a, a pushing punch to control him, I, I think because he was expecting it to be a jab. Um, and Lopez showing some diversity here, uh, some good stuff from Lopez in spite of the fact that he just doesn't have any idea why he's going to get his butt kicked so bad. Again, uh, you see the distance that they have between them. Um, Mikey Garcia establishes his distance. So this is how far they are. Neither one of them can hit each other. So when uh, Lopez steps forward with his patented little tell, his foot tell, uh, he just gives away all... All position by like basically selling out uh, to come in and Mikey Garcia knows he's not in any danger of the first punch and just counters him 
even though it lands on the back of the head that's not the point you know he didn't aim it there that's not malicious uh, it's the technique it's the timing um, and it was a great shot it was well timed uh, it's unfortunate that it hit him in the back of the head uh, moving on again puts his weight whoops puts his weight on his back leg again or on his front leg and eats a jab and now um, now uh, Lopez is kind of dispensed with a little bit with the um, the timing of the the glove touching uh, because he he can't figure out why he's even getting hit. Um, again, the first time that he goes for a straight right, rocks back, puts his weight on his front leg, and then just eats a jab. Um, and Mikey Garcia misses the right hand. I'm not sure how many right hands he even throws during the course of this round, uh, but he does miss that one. Touching gloves a little bit, and um, Mikey Garcia using a an active guard at the moment, you know, which is really good. Um, it, you know, it, it makes your opponent think if you're just standing in front of him, which he had been. Um, it, it allows Lopez to kind of see as he comes in where Mikey Garcia is going to be, uh, and he knows exactly where to place his punches. Um, so it's really important for him to be using some head movement on top of just, you know, moving away from him. Um, again, uh, Lopez starts out too far away, and Mikey Garcia only needs to worry about the second punch, whatever's coming, coming back. Whoops. Um, and is able to to get out of range and you know maybe counter or whatever. Again, more timing while Lopez is on that front foot because he can't punch when he's on it. Again, another shot. And now he he's able to get in and actually land a shot against Mikey Garcia. Um, if I don't exactly know, you know, what he's thinking right there. If he's thinking that Lopez is only going to jab with him, if he thinks, you know, he's just not expecting the shot. But we already saw him buckle him with the straight left hand. Um, you know, it's that's debatable. It doesn't matter. It was a great freaking shot. I wouldn't let that guy hit me with that shot. Um, not saying I could stop him, but I'm just saying, like, you know, I just wouldn't let some guy punch me in the face, let alone one more Lopez with that left hand. Um, but... Um, Mikey Garcia is showing that his defense is, is, you know, a little bit lacking, not being able to get away from all of these left hands. He's just not prepared for them in every, in every circumstance. Um, and again, um, not the most responsible defense. He doesn't get his hands up. Like right now he's moving away with no control over Lopez. Um, he doesn't put his hand up. Like he kind of has his hand out right here when he kind of tries to parry the the jab but um i think he even might bring his right glove up a little bit but if Juan Moa lopez could follow up at all like lomachenko can um mikey garcia would be in a little bit of trouble um again right there you see the the little step that Juan Moa lopez has to um he has to use to set up his offense, and he eats a good shot. And it kind of looks like, um, you know, that semi-hook cross. I think it's a left cross. Kind of buckles Lopez. Boom. And uh, I think he's just trying to, you know, I can't find a rhyme or reason why Mikey Garcia goes in right there. It just looks like he kind of goes in. But one thing that you do notice um, Mikey Garcia kind of explodes into his punches, one of the reasons why he has so much power, but it also makes timing him a little easier. Again, he's stepping forward with the punch. It makes it easier to time it. You just almost always know when something's coming. And I, I still think that, uh, see, so catch him with the jab, I think if you listen to that punch, it does land, even though it's not a great shot from Lopez. But um, Mikey Garcia is showing that he's hittable so far. And 
you know, Lopez is not a slouch. You know, he had a great amateur career. Um, so, you know, a lot of that is like, there's good reason why he's able to land punches. He's not a bad fighter. Um, but he's definitely flawed. Uh, and as you notice, throughout the course of this round, Mikey Garcia is not really leading very much. Oh, that was good. That was really good from Lopez. Uh, like I just said a few seconds ago, um, Mikey Garcia jumps in with his jab, right? And I think he's kind of trying to catch Lopez, you know, off guard. Uh, and Lopez is able to counter him. And Mikey Garcia, if... If... Um, I guess that was not bad defense. I think he gets in the way of that left hand. Um, but he definitely eats that shot. Uh, it's tough to say. I think, you know, I think he grazes it. But um, he didn't have great defense while throwing that shot. As you see, um, look where his... His shoulder is, like Lomachenko's shoulders would be up higher. Um, his right hand would be up when he was throwing that shot. He also wouldn't lunge and make the timing of it, um, you know, really poor. Uh, so there's definitely some, some flaws in Mikey Garcia's defense here. Um, and, and Lopez is having a little bit of, a little bit of success here. Was he on his back foot there? I couldn't even tell. Let's see. Catches him while he's walking while all his weight's on his left leg again. And there might be even more to that than just him um, throwing with all the weight on his leg. Uh, because also it looks like uh, Wanma's pattern is kind of jab and then take a step, you know, and close the distance or whatever after uh, throwing a punch. So maybe that's also part of the rhythm that Mikey Garcia is trying to exploit because he knows that he's never going to take two steps forward and punch at, th at the same time or uh, consecutively. I don't think anything else happens in the round. Oh, no. Um, he eats a hook and, and um, Mikey eats a straight left hand. Uh, so both fighters showing that they're hittable I mean we all know that Juan Manuel Lopez is hittable but um, Mikey Garcia is doing a good job of countering him but he's not he's not able to stop Lopez's offense aside from the fact that he's hitting him with probably harder shots um, his jab is definitely harder um, we know his right hand's harder because when he does hit him with it he you know basically knocks him down and almost out um, but that aside, you know, unless part of his game plan was to not worry about Lopez's power, um, uh, there's no excuse to be getting hit this much. Again, I think he catches him, yeah, on the front foot, and then he tries to counter him. But Mikey Garcia is getting hit too much, and that's a, this right here is exactly the same, the same. Um, uh, the same exchange, you know, this micro exchange is exactly the same as the one before where Mikey Garcia got hit by the left hook. And you're seeing now that um, although Lopez is a very flawed fighter, he's realized that he's getting jabbed when he's on that front foot and he's countering Mikey's jab. So that's a great adjustment from Lopez. Um, I think he definitely catches him with the left hook, but the, the straight... Or the right hook, but the left hand definitely does not make it. Um, it's if you're judging that round, um, it's kind of most of the shots that um, that Mikey Garcia landed were good jabs, and they're good jabs. You know that guy's no no slouch. You know I watch all those ES News videos. Um, I love the Garcia clan, uh, and you see Mikey Garcia training in there, and his jab is legit, man. That's a punch. You don't want to get hit by that. Um, and Lopez, you know, he had a ton of knockouts early in his career, just knocking everybody out. He's a hard puncher, um, in spite of his technical flaws. Um, 
but I think he landed, I think Lopez landed more shots, you know, more power shots. It doesn't matter, you know, the tallying them. Um, if, but if Juanma Lopez didn't have that flaw in, in his rhythm that Mikey Garcia was so easily able to exploit, I would say that, and he wasn't, he wasn't exploiting it, I would say that Lopez would have won this round. Um, but because of the, the great tape that, Robert Garcia has available to watch uh, Juan Manuel Lopez and um, figure out a game plan and do this. You know, I think it's a really close round, and I I think that as far as scoring goes, uh, Mikey Garcia wins the round because of that. But as far as like boxing skills shown, um, I definitely have to give props to Lopez for showing adjustments, for making adjustments in the fight already. He's shown the most amount of skills um, as far as, you know, baiting the lead hand and then shooting the uppercut, even though he still got hit by that kind of jab thing from Mikey, um, baiting it again and landing the straight left. You know, he's, he's shown more craft, you know, and that term gets thrown around a lot. Um, you know, uh, I don't know how to explain it like super easy. It's already a 20 minute video, but craft is not, it's not being, not just being crafty and being cute and landing little pot shots. Um, it's how you develop your whole overall style. You know, like Mayweather for so long had his, his craft. He developed his craft, the way he approached every fight, you know, spend the, lose maybe the first two or three rounds. Um, and develop your habits for your opponent, like blocking the jab to the body. And he'd just throw jabs to the body, jab, 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 jab. And then and he would dip down like he was going for a jab to the body and like, you know, starting from the third, fourth, fifth round and get a leaping left hook and crack it with it. And then you don't know what's coming. Then you think the left hook's coming. And when you pause in front of him, he does a pull counter. Um, and Or he baits you into throwing a jab or... You know, whatever. That, that's all part of his craft, you know. Um, things that he does to, I don't want to say eat the clock in a fight, but set up his offense. Um, it's so much more, um, I don't know, how do you say it? It's so much more nuanced, and there's so much more to a fighter's craft. Like a, like, Chocolatito. That guy is, a, that is a fighter with craft. Like, the way that he, you know, rolls shots on the inside and throws other punches. And, you know, you could throw a jab at him like five different ways or five different jabs and he could counter it in five different ways with, you know, so many different slips and rolls. And, you know, that's part of his craft on how he gets inside and is able to land punches. Um, uh, anyway, um, so Juan Manuel Lopez showed some good skills in here. Uh, he showed that Mikey was hittable and... Uh, you have to be mindful of that because of the fact that you know the game plan was not to get hit by Juan Manuel Lopez because that dude has serious power and he was still able to set his shots up. Um, but Mikey Garcia got the round. Um, anyway, we're going to move on to the second round and I'll probably, I might upload this video tonight too. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, and subscribe or whatever. Uh, thanks guys.